how do you look at road America? How do you look at Sonoma? How do you look at the road course at Sonoma? Well, it's Sonoma. Um, pretty sure you could have a car that's only got like, pretty sure you could take a. I've never driven a Miata at Sonoma, but I'm sure after enough laps in, at, at Sonoma, even in one of those, you're probably spinning the tires off of that thing off every corner. That's just how Sonoma is. It's just a racer track, and it, um, you know, wears tires out of, of all kinds. Do you think you're getting better? You're a pretty good low road course racer. I've gotten better through practice and working on the simulator. Sonoma's one that I've only raced at once, and now we've changed configuration again, so it's kind of like starting over again. So hopefully um, learning and learning period is, is not too, uh, too large. Yesterday in practice, there was some communication about spotters having issues with some of the sight lines around here. How do you navigate that? between our crew chief spotter going into a race. Chase Briscoe and Michael McDowell also well, right now, the room. Right now it's tough to say because everyone is racing by themselves. Mm -hmm. So the spotters are there, but they are not really doing much. Um, the real test is going to be tomorrow in the race. So I hear that they're in a very tough position. Um, if they're going to move them, that's going to be good. But if they don't, we have to adjust to that. And I'm trying to adjust or mirrors as good as possible and know which are the zones that they can see so we can be more careful in those zones. Have your team been in communication with NASCAR about possibly moving them perhaps? That's not, honestly I don't know and I don't care because that's not something I'm involved. I have some more things I have to worry about. If they change them good, if they don't, they don't. That is the same for everyone. Thank you. What is the biggest racetrack that you said was like the baby? What's the characteristics that remind you? A long, long corner, one and two, also probably very flat, three and four. Um, it reminds me quite a bit of uh, open on, open on corner one and three. Uh, it's good, it's a good track, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, Daniel, uh, you've been so close to winning this year. How bad do you want that victory and do you think you can get it done here again with you? Very bad. Uh, I think that uh, to be able to get it done, uh, this weekend we'll have to beat those pesky guys. Those pesky boys are very fast this weekend. Um, hopefully we made some good gains. Uh, I know we made gains from yesterday to today. The question is how much, right? So uh, we're going to become a top five car or a top ten car. If we become a top five car, we can have a shot at it. If we became a top ten car, we're going to need some luck. So you find out. I know we're at Gateway, but uh, I'll just ask about last week. Yeah. Is, um, when you reflect upon it, or do you even reflect, or is it like, hey, once you left the track, it's all about Gateway? Yeah, I feel like normally I always, as soon as we leave the track, I'm like, well, there's nothing you can really change about it now, so just go on. But I will say this, like, it still hurts knowing that. Yeah, you could have had a chance with the, the Coke 600. So, yeah, I would say this one definitely bothered me more than any other race. Um, and I went back and watched it just literally 15, 20 times that when I spun out trying to figure out really what I did because I didn't feel like I did anything different than I had done the whole time. I went and looked at the data and everything else. And, and it just, it didn't, when I went in there, I didn't expect to spin out. Like I was just trying to go in there and run underneath him and try to be at his left rear by the exit, and I just spun out as soon as I got to the middle. So I was just trying to understand that way if I'm in that situation again, you know, what I could do different. But yeah, that one definitely stung a lot more than, than races in the past for sure. Just because uh, I'm guessing like Bristol was more of a, I think you tell me, that was more of a last gas effort. Yeah, like and Bristol. And this was more of a, you felt like you, this was a really, yeah, really for sure. Good like uh, at Bristol, like I, both races, I felt like I was better than the leader, but at Bristol, you know, I didn't get there until literally the last corner coming to the checkered. So like that was my one shot where at Charlotte, I mean, I was working Kyle over for yeah. 20 laps. Yeah. You know, looking back on it, when I slid in with four to go, I was clear for literally a quarter of a second. I didn't take it. I wanted to try to leave in the lane, and I wish now I would have taken it. I just felt like if I did that, I was probably going to put him in the fence at the time, so I, I didn't take it. Um, and then I, I spin out, you know, two laps later, so now I wish I would have just taken it and, and kind of dealt with it. But, yeah, I think, you know, it was just different, you know, circumstances. Like I said, first of all, it was got there one lap you had to try something you did all that work just to get there and then at charlotte i kept working him over and like i said i was just trying to to be at his left rear tire by the time i got to the exit and i think looking back now i was way farther up to his door than i ever was any other lap that race and i think just the air was swimming out were you surprised to see them throw the caution as quickly as they did when you hit the wall like sharks 
No, nah, because I was, I spun out like across the whole racetrack. So I, I mean, I, and honestly, like I, I thought I was gonna spin all the way out and stop, and I was lucky at the very end able to catch it. But no, nah, I wasn't surprised just because I, I was so spun out, you know, going all the way across the racetrack. Yeah, you know, the other guys that were blowing tires, like they never really spun, spun out. Like they'd get sideways at the wall or whatever, where mine was smoke everywhere and everything else. So I wasn't really surprised that they didn't caution. Did you actually hit Charlotte? I mean, maybe the slightest. I know my right rear bumper like had some marks on the wall, so if I hit it, it was just barely. But yeah, I just kind of spun out. I think I maybe, maybe touched it very, very lightly though. Did that seem like a five-hour race inside the car? Uh, the first 200 laps to me felt way longer than the last 200. You know, that race I was telling Harrison Burke before, I said, you're going to get to the halfway mark. And I said, We're only halfway. Like, it just takes forever. Um, but for me, the last 200 laps, I was in the top five for most of the day. So it went a little bit quicker because you were just constantly trying to kind of get yourself to the lead. But yeah, I, th I didn't think it felt that long from the driver's seat. The, the first part of it, dude, like I said, the first 200, the first stage felt extremely long. But after that, I, I felt like it went on that same note, how refreshing is it to go from a 600 mile race to just a 300 mile race this week? Yeah, it'll definitely go a lot quicker, I think. So, yeah, you know, I don't mind the long races. You know, I don't think we need more than one 600 mile race, but it is cool. You know, it's something different. It's kind of a race of attrition. I mean, I think there's only 27 cars to finish. So, there's something to just trying to get to the end. And especially with these cars, they're just so hard to drive. Like, to, to put 600 miles together and not wreck is kind of a, a good day. So, yeah, it's interesting to go from that long race and then you go to this week where it's one of the shorter races probably all year. So, yeah, I think it's kind of a cool transition. You go from a long, long endurance race to now it's kind of a sprint race. You know, 300, laps is, is, or 300 miles is a super long time for us. You mentioned your win at Phoenix. And so with this race, the truck series has a triple uh, – truck challenge so cups guys can't go down and race in that series so no one can go out and get that extra seat time a lot of people draw comparisons to this track in phoenix how valuable is your notes from phoenix going into this weekend yeah i thought it was pretty good you know we we were pretty close setup wise to where we would have ran at phoenix and i felt like yesterday as soon as we unloaded we were kind of in the hunt so i felt like you know we were third and fifth place car kind of all day long yesterday we need a little bit to, to be the best car but yeah i think this place does race a lot like Phoenix, as far as just how the car feels, the grip level, a lot of that's all the same. So, yeah, having a good baseline setup from a place like that, I feel like, especially in this next gen car, it seems like if you have a good balance, you know, at similar racetracks, it only carries over to the ones that are like where the old car wasn't always the case with that. So, yeah, having a good setup at Phoenix will hopefully pay off. You know, we don't know what it's going to be like when we start racing, but I felt like our car drove really good yesterday, and that's kind of what I always just shoot for. Hey race fans, thanks for watching this video from Danny B Talks. If you're new to my channel, please be sure to hit subscribe and click the notification bell so you never miss another video from my channel.